Hey guys, do you have one of those spots out where you live called the bridge to nowhere? Somebody didn't plan things right, somebody ran out of money, there was an earthquake or something, or maybe they spent $14 billion on a train to nowhere and it just stopped, you know, the bridge to nowhere. Uh, that's what this episode is called, Bridge to Nowhere, because believe you me, in my guitar making experience, I have built a lot of bridges to nowhere. Bridges that gave me intonation problems, string buzz, wouldn't stay in place, broke, shifted around, name it. I am the master of building bridges to nowhere. So let's look at my progression. That's, a, that's using that word pretty loosely. My progression of how I finally got to the bridges that you all know me for now. Let's hit the workbench. All right, guys, my mistake started really early, in fact, right away with this guitar, my very first guitar. Oh, before I forget, always forget, at the end of my video, down at the bottom, there's going to be a round circle. Uh, subscribe, hit the notify bell, and there's playlists there for you. I want to tell you about the background music is North Mississippi All-Stars, Do It Like We Used To, 1996 to 2008. This is a great live uh, double CD record. It's got all the favorites on there and you'll find out that most of those have roots back to some of the old timers. So while we're over here, yeah, Bob Log restaurant, best concert ever. Hey Jessica White, what are you doing? You're not in jail today, are you? Good. All right, let's get back to this. There's the camera. People have asked me what's on your workshop board. Okay, back to reality. Um, before I forget, this right here is just a block of wood with a couple big screws in it. I cut the center out there and put a piece of bamboo in it for a slide stand. This is what I display my guitars at the county fair on typically. The uh, neck through design coming out the back of the box. It sits right down in that groove and everything's good. So maybe think about building yourself one of them. Now underneath this eye bolt is a dash emblem out of an auto car rig up truck I used to run out of Elk City, Oklahoma in uh, the early to mid 80s and then on top of that I put this eye bolt there's a couple fatal errors here um, number one threads and strings don't match people are wondering why are you constantly going out of uh, tune well these things move and and unless you groove them and stuff um, I had a, quite a few guitars with this setup built and I wish I could get them back and fix them but I like this one how many guitars do you know that has C6 Steve and Dad Magnuson's, his drummer, um, their signatures on them? But very first guitar, worst bridge ever. Okay, this is the first guitar, the C6 Steve guitar with the worst bridge. It's got a piezo in it and uh, it's pretty rough. So I got away from the eye bolt and went to possibly something even worse. And that was this. I found this, I think at a swap meet or a yard sale or an estate sale or something. It's, it's some kind of a, a brace that, mechanical brace, you put a bolt in here, a bolt in here, maybe fit on a car to hold an alternator to the frame or something like that, who knows. But I was cutting grooves in this and a problem with this is the strings would jump out. So unless the action was really high and there was a steep angle on the strings, this would jump out. This lasted a very short uh, period of time. And it actually showed up first on a guitar called Pumpkin. You've seen this one? Oh, it's upside down. Yeah, there you go. You've seen this one before, North Mississippi All-Stars. Um, poster on the back at yeah, Cody and Luther Bull signed it good um, but this was on this guitar for a bit it just didn't work out 
So then I went to something even more ridiculous. Not getting too far out in the weeds here, but most of you know that either I have a bone bridge uh, or a bone nut up here, not a bridge. Uh, but some of my guitars have this lamp hardware here. This is just a uh, brass nut that goes on to here and I can tighten these up here. But I was actually using these for bridges for a bit. So what I would do is get uh, the bolt and two of these brass. This is what holds the top of your lampshade on, basically. But I would get two of these, and then I would take them to a grinder, lock them up in a vice grips, and grind one side of them flat so they would f sit flat on the top of the box. You see that right there? I don't know if you can see it or not. But that's ground down. Um, it still has the problem with the groove. So I would file this a little bit, but this just didn't work out for me. I got away from that pretty quick. All right, this is punk and it's got the bolt uh, bridge with the flattened out lampshade nuts on it. A little bit of string buzz, not that bad. <laughs> If I ever run across my old guitars like this one, the Moxie guitar, which I'm, it got sent back to me for something uh, minor, and I just decided to completely rip it apart because you see those two dots right there? That's where the 25 and a half scale line is. And of course, it had one of these on it that was flat, and I got it back, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to tear this thing apart. I, I, I've torn the neck out of it, all kinds of stuff here. And um, anyway... Hey, Marilyn, I can see you out there, Marilyn. Yeah, I'll get this back to you. You better be good. Moved on to something even far cooler than before, but more and equally ineffective. Remember this one? The Reverend Peyton's big damn band, big blue 72 Chevy pickup truck. Look at those signatures, Breezy Reverend and Ben, their old drummer. Priceless, but let's go to the front. I actually use 72 Chevy parts, uh, wiper knob, trim off of the front uh, fender, and then I actually used a bolt and tried to ground it, and I found out this was all pop metal, so my ground didn't work. That episode is called Grounding the Strings. This is the guitar. Um, learned a big lesson, and that's when I started doing the copper tape under here. So I fixed this. There's actually two of these guitars. Reverend Payton has one. I have the other. They've both been played. And I think you've heard it uh, on my channel. Anyway, I got away from this really quick too. All right. The old 72 Chevy, the one that gave me probably the most problems. Pop metal does not ground. Again, the grounding episode. Um, a lot of work went into this one to get it right. But it, it sounds pretty good if you like this. advancing <laughs> yet far more disastrously here we go it is the Bob Law guitar I love this guitar it's been played I got footage of it I've talked about this a bunch of times but I got really extravagant here look at that I actually use swamp cooler parts to make this bridge it's all copper tubing and washers and grounding clamps and whatever let me explain to you how I did this and how it failed okay you need tubing quarter inch tubing um, if it's corroded it's better a tubing cutter and then based on this one here you need about cut the tubing about 80 millimeters that's going to get me two dislikes immediately two from my consistent metric haters hate okay stick with me here this is going to get complicated now remember you're using swamp cooler parts so it's going to turn into rocket science pretty quick you take your piece of tubing you lay the end of it about that much not that much but that much always be exact you set it on the bench 
and you smack it a good one to flatten it out like that. See how that's flattened out? Then from the hardware store, you get one of these copper grounding clamps. You stick that in there like so, tighten it down. What do you tighten this down to? Well, you drill a hole that big in the top of the box or the bridge goes, two of them. You'll have one of these clamps here and one here. You just sit this on the box, cut this down, and that's how it's prepped for the box. So you have one here, one here. Now, it's important that once you get this cut, you're going to measure off how far your strings are apart. If they're seven millimeters apart, you come in at least seven millimeters off of there. Take your trusty punch. You're all one, two, three if it's a three string, four if it's a four string. Smack that good. Lay it down. Take a small bit and drill through. You want that wood in here while you're drilling through. One, two, three, four. Okay, you see, one, two, three, four, and the wood is in there. Now, why is the wood in there? The wood is not in there. These strings are rub rubbing back and forth whenever they move a little bit, and they will get cut by the copper tubing, I guarantee you. So before you string this up, um, I use these washers to adjust the height. Again, this goes through holes in the top of the box. That big, let me grab it here not there is actually on the inside of the box uh, underneath but grab my pointer one more time it's important that you file all this and make sure there's nothing jagging on here so your strings don't get cut now probably a good idea if you change your strings and you have this set up replace this rod when you do and once it's in there hold it tight and then drill through it every time you replace your strings did this work no hell no why well because the wood actually causes the string to buzz so there's a little bit of buzz here and when i hook it up to the amp you'll hear this is a very strange tuning i um bob actually played this at uh, the surf rodeo in ventura a couple years ago he did great with it uh, but again there's two of these guitars he's got the other one it's got a different type of bridge but i love this one i actually you'll hear the buzz it actually kind of adds to the guitar but i evolved from this pretty quickly all right the bob law guitar with the swamp cooler uh pipe bridge whatever you want to call it this thing is a monster um it has two pickups on it it's got a piezo this is when i started building piezos in so it's got that run up run up and down the board i got this hooked up to two amps so it's got that do rag uh, sound and then you kick on the coil So by now I'm getting pretty frustrated and I got an increasing collection of swamp cooler parts and bolts and garbage and stuff and every one of them is giving me a problem. Either things are moving, the intonation isn't right, or I got string buzz. Even the stuff that worked okay is, is, is really hard to find and I mean I'm not going to drive around to yard sales for three years trying to find another one of these, you know what I mean? So I'm thinking, thinking, you know what? What am I going to do? What am I going to use? And then the answer is staring me right in the face, just like it is you right now. There it is, an adjustable bridge with thumb screws, just like they use on these old arch tops. You're going to get another look at somebody really good playing this guitar using the link that's where is it right about there right about now prepare to be blown away wasn't that cool okay let's take a look here so i got one of these and on the first guitar i use it on it didn't dawn on me this comes apart i can pull this part off i can take these screws out i can take this the stud off of both sides and i can just screw this into the top of the box so instead I cut this down into the top of the box, and that's the King guitar. The King guitar is the only one out there that's got a full bridge on it. And it come from that bridge, come off an old 
uh, silver tone and, and uh, a parts box again from my favorite supplier yard sale hey check this one out this is where my inspiration went once I saw that arch top look at this one good guitar North Mississippi Osborne North Mississippi All-Stars Anders Osborne did a tour a couple years ago went and saw them used the gig poster to build a guitar before uh, the show and then had them all sign it another classic out of my collection let's get this uh, moved up here there we go can we see the bridge yeah there it is look at that this one is down in to the box the studs go down into the box there's a hole there screws in these are uh, thumb screws you can adjust them cut grooves into it this is rough this is one of my early ones but this is what i've evolved to finally right now we're getting the floating bridges this one has a coil and a piezo uh, like the bob log <laughs> That was a piezo. Let's do some coil. All right, this is one of my favorite guitars that was built. Uh, right after I discovered how to put floating bridges on right there the Mr. Airplane guitar Margaret Garrett signed it This was actually out on the road with her for a while until she took the skies Zephyr guitar and traded it out with me And that's what she's playing right now, but Big lesson here is these rosewood bridges. I think you can make them yourself by just grabbing a piece of wood and making an angle on it making a pyramid cutting a couple grooves down in there uh, and putting thumb screws or bolts or whatever you want to do on a post I mean it's pretty easy but did you know that bridges actually function for a reason it's not just to be pretty or look like a bolt or look like stuff you brought out of a yard sale and that is to adjust the heights of the strings up and down so once you start going to this you've got a way to cut the grooves in for the individual strings to get them right on the action because if the action isn't right guys sooner or later the people are going to put your guitar down if they can actually finger pick this and and use a slide too it's it's much better but this was my big breakthrough all right mr airplane man guitar uh another floating bridge piezo and coil i think this is the guitar where things started to click for me in a nation was a lot better um, sound a lot better piezo first and of course coil now I like that um, I can turn the piezo down a little bit just start a little get a little bit tinny there and you can adjust things separately. yeah that sounds very different doesn't it now I kind of want to give you a side shot on the coffee can here I think I can give you everything you need to see you can see that the action here is a tad bit high for playing slide but if I want to lower that down and I come back in here you can see that thumb screw right there is up quite a bit can you see that so all I have to do is loosen the strings up and turn that down some and you're good to go but again I can cut grooves in this I can um, screw it up and down um, and and it is a solution so if I were to start all over building these things again first thing I do is probably watch somebody else's channel to learn how to do it because I'm infamous for struggling along on my own and, and then <laughs> finding stuff out five years too late but I would go right to these right away they're going to help you uh, get your action right um, and get rid of string buzz the one thing I will tell you is when you're filing these grooves 
if you use a triangle file, especially on these big strings, what ends up happening is it doesn't round off the bottom of the of the cut doesn't round off like that and it will kind of sit in there and wobble and give you some string buzz so if you're using one of these and you filed it make sure that your file you get a nice thin flat file to finish off the very end it's okay to use a triangle file at first but get that bottom where that string sits down in there because if it's not dropping down into the bottom there it will buzz yeah once the floating bridges came in for me uh my string height it's a lot easier to change from slide, uh, especially on something junky like this. But typically, again, a, a piezo. That sounds trashy. And then, of course, we've got a coil. We can mix them. my guitars i swear one of these days my wife is going to get smart and put all them on ebay they're all signed by an artist there's video footage of somebody playing them she can make a ton of money off of you guys or somebody else anyway don't even think about it but is wasn't this a long-winded way of saying just use a floating bridge right away with the thumb screws and the uh yeah they're, they're cheap uh get a hold of me if you don't know where to get them but um, I so much enjoy, believe me, giving you guys a head start on five years of mistakes <laughs> that I've made. That's really what my channel is all about. Thanks again for watching. Uh, don't forget, give me a subscribe and a notify and check out my playlist. And I'll see you next time.